Let's talk about toxicity and bones and joints. Uh, we've, we've started out that discussion and we want to continue with that. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And in order to understand this um, issue of toxicity in any particular organ, I think we need to understand the basic mechanism or pathway that the body uses for toxins. And, and I'm not a, 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 a you know, toxicity expert in terms of the science, uh, you know, or the toxicologist, that kind of thing. But I have done a lot of cleansing and healing work, and I will tell you what it feels like from the inside, okay? And, uh, you know, if, if, if some of the science pathway isn't quite right, but, but this is what I'm feeling on the inside. So a toxin comes in and body has a choice, okay? It can either block it, I mean, we get exposed, it can either block it at, at, at whatever entry point it is, okay? In other words, we can block it at the skin, there's mechanisms underneath the skin that actually, you know, even digest uh, enzymes and things that can try to, try to start to digest uh, material, try to get it, keep it out, physical barrier. Uh, we have the, the digestive system, which is a tube that runs through the middle of the body that it's trying to keep out those toxins that it doesn't want. Um, you know, we've got the respiratory system trying to trap the, the toxins or the stuff that's coming in. So the, the, the process of trying to keep the toxin out, okay, the body has these mechanisms. Once the toxin has penetrated through all that, okay, we've got it into the system, it's in the bloodstream, it's in the tissues, it's going to end up in the bloodstream, okay? We can, of course, we can have local toxicity where I just dipped my uh, hands into nail, fingernail polish remover and I've got my whole tips of my fingers dipped in acetone. Um, there's going to be a much more local concentration of toxicity there, but some of that is going to make it into the bloodstream and into the lymph, which goes systemically. Now, what does the body do with it? We've got toxin running around. Now, what do toxins do? At the basic fundamental level, toxins cause damage. They cause, they steal electrons typically. Um, most of the time, they're uh, either stealing or giving an electron. I, trying to think of all the different examples of that. But anyway, we're dealing with chemical reactions, they're reactivity, they're reactive, they're running around, uh, like I said, usually stealing electrons, uh, oxidizing, as we're called their oxidizers. And, uh, and so once they steal an electron, it changes the thing, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the biomolecule, let's say it's your membrane system or your piece of DNA or something, it has to, it changes the chemistry of that, and it has to go and find an electron, uh, or it changes how it bonds with, the, with its neighbor and that kind of thing. So you can have all kinds of different things. That's something, a protein that loses electron can become sticky, change its form, uh, and become sticky or, or not work, or it can uh, not stick, it can stop binding and, and fall apart. So you got a lot of different pathways that can happen, I mean, you know, once that happens. But the basic structure is that. So you've got these toxins, they're causing damage, the body's like, okay, wait a minute, what do we do with this? The immune system is involved in eating up those toxins, okay? So a lot of times it'll try to eat those up, and that will be the white blood cells, typically the phagocytes are called uh, and, uh, and they will go around, they're, they're crawling around, literally crawling around through the tissue like amoeba, and they're chomping on like little Pac-Man, trying to chomp, eat up all these toxins. And then once it has those toxins, it dumps them into a lysosome and tries to break those down, okay? In the case of something like a, a heavy metal like mercury or lead, it's obviously not going to break it down. There isn't anywhere for it to break it down into. So that's where those toxins are, have to be neutralized. They have to be chemically altered, uh, and, and so the, the body goes into a, a, a neutralization process. And that's often happens, in my thinking, it happens in the liver. And so the liver, like for example, for metals, toxicity, mercury and lead, it combines it with sulfur derivatives and, uh, and that sulfur metal compound becomes less toxic or it becomes more mobile in, in terms of the body can now deal with it. It can, it can move it through tissue and out uh, and, and so there's that, that opportunity to neutralize and get rid of. So the get rid of usually if it's in the liver, it dumps it into the bowel and that goes out the bowel. Uh, if it's other kinds of metabolic waste that will end up processing through the kidneys. So sometimes these metabolic processes are still toxic and they can damage the kidneys on the way out uh, and, or the bowel gets inflamed and irritated as this stuff is trying to get out. If it doesn't get out, it can't get out or it doesn't get out, then it has to store it. It has to put it away somewhere, right? Just like the junk you don't want to deal with in your life, you stuff in the back of the closet, then the body stores these toxins, okay? Uh, if it can't get rid of it right then at the moment. And a lot of times these, this reaction happens very, very quickly. 
I can feel in the first few seconds of exposure that I've just maximized my ability to neutralize the toxin and now I'm going into storage mode. Um, and so here's the thing, and I probably should have a whole discussion on, on toxicity reaction, but the body is either in storage mode or elimination mode. And if you're accumulating more toxins on a daily basis, then the, the whole ge machinery gears up for just storage. It, it doesn't focus on elimination anymore. The elimination system is overloaded and it just goes right to storage. Uh, it's kind of like calories when you're talking about you know fat. If you're talking about losing weight, you uh, you, you have to eat less calories than, if you bur than you burn. If you eat more calories, then the whole thing is into storage. So as soon as those calories comes in, doesn't matter what kind of calories, it just goes straight to storage. In other words, it's building fat. And the same kind of thing in the to toxicity world, uh, as the toxin comes in, if the body's already geared up for storage, then it's just going to store it. It's not going to eliminate it. Um, then you have a debt. You have a, you have a toxicity debt uh, that you have to pay back. You've got to clear that closet out eventually or not. You can go to your grave holding all those toxins, and people do. But that's an early grave. and tend to, It tends to be an early grave and a more painful grave uh, dying process when you accumulate all these toxins. And specifically, now we get to the bones and joints, specifically these toxins end up in the bones and joints because they're further away from vital, vital organs, right? You don't want them running around the bloodstream and that ends up in the brain. You don't want them in the, touching the heart, right? That, that's a vital organ. The joints, you, you know, if, if, if we don't, if, if the body is a little bit more stiff and sore, that's not nearly as bad as the heart giving out or the brain falling apart. Okay, so the the body will store these in periphery and trying to get rid of it as far away from the, from this, in other words, the back of the closet. It's sending that stuff to the back of the closet and it goes into the bones and joints. Well, over time, the bones and joints eventually get inflamed. The, 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 the circulation is, we have blood flow that goes all the way through the bones, right? If you breathe into your bones, you realize that, that, that there is still blood flowing and moving through the bones. It has to. We're going to talk about how bones form the blood. Of course, you have to have a constant portal to, to feed those, those new cells right back into the bloodstream. Well, there's a lot of blood going through the bones. If you've ever broken a bone, it produces a huge bruise. Why? Because there's blood flowing through there. So the, this, is, this shouldn't be a difficult concept. We've got blood flowing uh, through the bones. The body has access to these. And so it says, okay, I'm going to store these away. Problem is, like I said, this means that you've got a backlog. We all have a backlog of storage. And, uh, and we've got to clear those out. That creates um, this acidity in the joint and inflammation in the joint. Things get stiff and painful. Uh, and we, then we suffer the consequences of that. Some people are having, having that happen early. And if the immune system, which we'll talk about in a few more months, uh, the immune system gets out of whack, then even the smallest amount of toxicity ends up creating an inflammatory response, an immune response, and that's called autoimmune issues, right? And so the, you can see how all, hopefully you're starting to learn how all this stuff cascades together. Um, the, so the, now what do we do? We've got all this toxin. We've got to get the body switched over from a storage mode into elimination mode. And we can't do that if we have more and more toxins coming in. So a lot of people say, and, and, and if, you've, if you've been following me on this one, you may experience this yourself. You know, I used to be able to tolerate fabric softener or the laundry detergent. Now, once I've gotten rid of that stuff, now, I mean, I used to be able, no problem. I used to wear that all the time. I used to, you know, I'd go down the aisle of the, the laundry aisle and I didn't smell anything or I'd go do my, and, and it's no big deal. Now, after you get rid of it, you come, your body, you're starting to try to put, put it back in and the body's like, no, we are not doing that. That is toxic stuff. We are eliminating that right away. You, you have switched over from storage mode to elimination mode and immediately your body's like, no, eliminate that. Get rid of it. I don't want to touch that. That is, that's not coming into my body. And so re, you react very strongly to those odors and you say, well, I've become sensitive. Well, yes you've become sensitive, but that's not a bad thing. You've become aware of the fact that that is a toxin and it's hurting your body, okay? And so we now we need to take responsibility for that whole thing. The problem is, well, and the good thing is, as more and more and more of us do this, we are starting to push the market in, in like literally in our dollars, using or voting with our dollars, and we push the market for more and more natural things because more and more of us are like, no, 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 I, I, I'm experiencing this. I've got to get rid of this toxin. I can't allow more stuff to come in. 
if you think of it just, it ports over into the rest of our life. If we allow things, if we allow junk to go on, right, and just keep, then you just go, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. The amount of junk that you allow, and I'm talking if social junk, behaviors, all kinds of things, if you just allow a little bit, you're gonna allow a little bit more and allow a little bit more and allow a little bit more, and you end up in a mess at the end, okay? And so it's much better, much healthier for its individuals, both psychologically, emotionally, socially, uh, as, as a culture, to nip it in the bud, get rid of it at the moment. So now we're becoming more sensitive in our body for that moment of toxicity. No, I don't want that. And so I'm, I'm going to choose away from that. And this is the whole essential part of this, this uh, wellness strategy. You have to stop bringing poison in or you will not feel the difference of when you, you when that stuff comes in because your body's already in storage mode. It just says, okay, fine, bring it in. I'll just load it up in the next closet, the next warehouse. You know, that's it. So how do we get rid of this? This is part of what we're talking about. Your consciousness and your breathing and your circulation will start to dump toxins out of the system. And that's where sulfurzyme, sulfurzyme, you need that nutritional sulfur, especially with metals and especially in the bones. When we start detoxing the bones, it's going to have metals in it, and it's these metals that we need to get rid of, but we don't want them running around. We don't want to mobilize them. That's a phase one process, phase one detoxing and phase two. I've talked about that back in, in digestive tract or elimination system. Uh, phase one, we mobilize the toxin, get, get it going. Phase two, we eliminate it. If you don't have enough, if you use essential oils, they tend to be phase one mobilizers, so if you use essential oils, you're going to mobilize those toxins, but if you don't take enough sulfurzyme, you end up with those toxins running around the bloodstream, and where do they go from there? They try to go out the skin or out the breath, uh, and, and you end up with problems like skin rashes and things like that. So that's where you need more sulfurzyme and less oils if you're having a massive skin reaction. That's a detox reaction. So back off on the essential oils and increase your sulfurzyme and your water and your breathing. Breathe in. Now, you can do breathing specifically to detox your joints, right? So you breathe into each joint, right? And you breathe, what are we going to breathe in? Oxygen. We're going to send oxygen into each one of these joints. I'm going to deliberately and with my mind send water. If I don't drink the water, I can't send it. So I need to drink some water and breathe in and, and drink, get that oxygen. Oxygen and water are our primary detoxers. Then... I'm going to, and you go back to month one, my primary detox mechanisms, which is why I did month one with that, is the respiratory system is super C, self, uh, vitamin C, and sulfurzyme. Okay, those are my two main detoxers. So we need both of those. And so we breathe in, send those into the joints, and wash those joints out and feel the sparkle and clean. You know how to do the scrubby bubbles. We've done that before. The cleansing, we go back to month two if you haven't got, uh, caught up on that and breathe in the scrubby bubbles into the joint, and you could do each joint at a time, spend a few minutes doing that. Um, I probably should do one video of just breathing through and cleansing the joints, uh, but I don't wanna do that if you're not ready with all of the, all of the support mechanisms in place, because it'll end up detoxing you and you won't like me. Not that I care that you like me or not, but what I'm saying is you won't have a good experience and you'll go back into to just storage mode. Okay, I can't deal with that. I'm going to end up, no, I don't want to detox. I can't deal with it. There's too much junk in the closet. The, the garage is too filled up. I don't want to deal with it. But you're losing premium living space. And I'm just metaphorically here, uh, losing premium uh, living space when you have your body all junked up. So you could think of your body as a big mansion and you're living in a thousand square feet or, or even 500 square feet or even 300 square feet and the rest of it's junked up. You deserve that whole mansion. You deserve to live in the whole space, the entire temple of this Holy Spirit, you, you, of your spirit, the temple. You deserve to live in that whole space and yet half of it is junked up, okay? And so we've got to reclaim that space that is part of what this is all about of not just being well and never is not ill, not just being out of pain, but actually celebrating the fullness of what we, who we are and what we're capable of, okay? Wellness, one day at a time, one breath at a time, one drink of water at a time, one drop of essential oil at a time. Happy wellness.